Yezu reveals a brand new dual band HT for analog and Yezu system fusion called the FT5DR. Let's talk about it. Shut up and sit down. Ham Radio 2.0, where we do reviews, news, and how-tos of things that are new in amateur radio. My name is Jason. I'm KC5HWB, and this is news. Anytime a new radio is announced or releases or anything like that, I've done six and a half years worth of videos just talking about new stuff. That's where the 2.0 comes from. So today, I was informed about Yezu releasing a brand new radio called the FT5. DR. In fact, the guys at Martin Lynch and Sons, which I'll put a link up here for that, they did a short video about it. It's available for pre-order on their website. I think it's 599 euros. Not real sure what that translates to, but I'll probably figure it out before the end of the video. <laughs> so it's it's on a pre-order. I'm not sure what the timing is or anything like that. Really don't know why they went from the FT3DR to the FT5DR. I suspect they've got an FT4 radio that's a dual band analog ht and it's like a ft4 vx or something like that so maybe they just didn't want to do it con for the, to save confusion something like that but um not really sure much more than that at this point in time uh but i did want to share it with everybody because it was announced today i think it was announced today it might have been yesterday a couple days ago something like that Two or three of you guys, my viewers, sent me links today and said, hey, check this out. And I'm like, you know what? I just found that. Uh, one of one of the dealers that I work with shared it with me. And kind of like three, they sent it to me and three or four viewers sent it to me all at the same time. So I appreciate uh, you guys keeping me in the loop on that stuff. But this flyer is, this uh, new product announcement is dated August 16th, 2021, which is when I'm recording this. It says, it says uh, Dear Yezu Dealers, we're pleased to introduce the FT5DR 5 watt C4FM FM 144 430 dual band digital transceiver. Transceiver. The new FT5DR is a full featured C4FM handheld transceiver with superior operability and new sophisticated functions. Even in a compact body, and it gives um, 2.44 inch by uh, 2.44 inch width, 1.34 inch diameter or depth rather. I'm sorry, and uh, 3.94 inch height. I compare, I went back and looked at the FT3D dimensions. They're almost exactly the same. So it's about the same size of HT. Presumably it will take the same battery like the FT1, 2, and 3 have all done. Time will tell on that. Uh, this radio provides reliable 5 watt RF, RF output and achieves a 1 watt audio power on the speaker that has been tuned for quality audio. Real dual band operations, so VV, UU, VU, and UV are available. To, with two independent receivers, so it will have dual receive, not just dual watch, but dual receive. Large individual LED indicators for band A and B present the status and communication modes, either digital or analog, in each band instant, in, instantly, it says. Uh, the new FT5DR supports simultaneous C4FM digital. So in other words, you can have fusion on the top and the bottom band at the same time when i did my video about the ftm 300 i didn't know this at the time because i've never owned an ftm 400 but apparently the ftm 400 you can only do digital on the top or the bottom band i forget which one which one it is but the ftm 300 which is the one i have in my truck right now you can do digital on both bands so that's kind of a new feature that they've added in later models so this goes on to say and i'll put a link to this in in the chat below and this goes on to talk about uh, c4fm digital communication features which were already popular in the market, such as automatic mode select, that's the part that I don't like about Fusion, digital group ID operation, smart navigation function are available on the 5D, FT5D. Uh, the radio also supports WireZX portable digital node function as well. So you don't need a, uh, an HRI 200 box to connect this radio directly to the WireZX. This radio itself will work as a WireZX node, which, Pretty much all their radios will do that now. They released firmware a couple years after Fusion came out to where it would allow the FTM100 and the FTM400 to do that. The FT3D and I believe the 2D also can act as a WireZX node now without having that HRI200 box in the middle of it. Used to be you had to have the HRI200 box in between the repeater and the internet or the radio and the internet to act as a node into WireZX. That's no longer the case in all these newer models. Advanced features of the FT5DR are wireless hands-free operation using, using optional Bluetooth headset, an SSM BT10, 
Vox function, memory auto grouping, VFO band skip function, wide range RITs, and a, a similar other simultaneous AM FM broadcast reception. Okay. New quick release holster, the SHB26, is included with the FT5DR package as a supplied accessory that allows single touch attaching and detaching the transceiver while wearing a holster on a belt. Uh, it says it will be available in August and we will start taking your orders now. So this is a message to dealers again. Okay, so here's a little bit better picture of it right there. Basically, kind of kind of browsing through this, it doesn't really have a lot of newer features over the FT3D. The two things that kind of caught my eye, okay, I read through both of these documents. It's not Triban, all right? Yezu could have really kind of cornered the market right now if they wanted to because with the discontinuation of the Kenwood D74 and with the brand new release of the ICOM ID52, which I did a video about that right here too, Yezu, and this this radio's probably been on on the R and D and in 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 the planning stages for six months or maybe even twelve months. So it's not like they just came up with this idea yesterday. But they could have cornered the market with a with a tri band radio, since Kenwood's tri band radio has gone away and the brand new ICOM radio doesn't have tri band. So right now the top two radios on the market are going to be this one and ICOM's ID fifty two. Neither of which have the two twenty band. So that's a little bit of a disappointment in my book. I would have liked to see a little bit more features added to this radio. But again, scanning over it, you know, it's got this um, seven or eight band reception. It looks like it receives air band. It'll receive um, 137 to 174 ham radio, 174 to 220, 222 to 4, 420, 420 to 470, 470 to 580, and it'll transmit from 144 to, one, to 148, 430 to 430. There's a, this is the USA model that we're talking about here. It also receives 800 to 999 megahertz for USA cellular blocked, which is normal. Uh, FM broadcast band, it looks like it'll receive 30 megahertz to 76 megahertz. It'll receive 1.8 to 30 megahertz. I missed that earlier. So it'll receive shortwave band and AM broadcast both. Okay, that's something that the D74 would also do. I don't recall if the FT3 did that, but I don't think it did. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. I, I don't recall that for sure. But the thing that really caught my eye about this radio was I went back and compared the notes on this one to the FT3D, and the FT3D makes mention of the fact that it basically is only supported with a Bluetooth headset from the the Yezu Bluetooth headset that is made for the FT3D. This one boasts that it will be much more Bluetooth compatible with other devices. So looking over here at the, this is where I kind of noticed that, at the uh, hamradio.co.uk, Martin Lynch and Sons website, they're the first ones that I've seen. I think Gigaparts will have it up probably soon, maybe tomorrow. Uh, so check that out when you can. But right here it says... This kind of caught my eye. It says built-in Bluetooth unit and the Vox function supports wireless in, in easy hands-free operation. There was a mention in the uh, the Martin Lynch and Sons uh, video they did about something about this as well. I kind of got, this is just kind of like I'm drawing my own conclusion here. It's kind of like, well, maybe it's got a little bit better, more compatible Bluetooth feature. The other thing I found that I thought was kind of interesting is that it, it says right here, a high resolution display Highlights the frequency and operational band. I think one of the main gripes about the FT3D was that uh, it kind of had an older type, like Garmin GPS navigation type display. It didn't have a like an Android or an, I, an iPhone type display for the touch screen. So it was kind of like an older style of, of touch screen. So I'm wondering if this one will be a little bit more high resolution. I guess we're going to have to see that what turns out with that in time and um, what kind of operations they they have for it. The other thing I was looking for that I didn't find yet, so I can't confirm or deny this, but it doesn't say anything about USB charging. Uh, I didn't. It has a micro USB cards or a micro SD card slot up to 32 gigs, a recording function. Uh, let's see right here. Wires exportable. Yeah, we already knew that. Uh, 1,200 and 9,600 BPS APRS data communication. So that's playing in line with uh, with true APRS. High-speed band scope function enables monitoring the 79 channels 
centered on the current VFO frequency. Okay. That's kind of cool. That's uh, they have, the ID52 has a band scope you can turn off and on. Uh, so anyway, nothing in nothing in the the stats about a special about a more generalized and non-proprietary charger, which is one of the really cool things I thought was really neat about the ID52. Several people commented that the micro USB charging capability of the ID52, which also the IC705 has. They're like, well, yeah, but micro SDs is old and, you know, they should have done USB-C. And I'm like, yeah, maybe that's true, but oh my gosh, this is ICOM making a USB chargeable radio. Kenwood and Yezu and Yenilenko aren't doing that right now. So at least it's a step in the right direction. So I would like to see a micro USB or at least, or maybe even a USB-C type charger uh, on this FT5DR. I would like to see a better screen, a screen resolution than the FT3. And if the Bluetooth was a, I didn't use the Bluetooth a lot on my FT3D, which is actually right here. I've got my FT3D right here. I really like this radio. It's, um, it works well. I don't care for the touchscreen. I find that when, if it's on my belt and I reach down and grab it and I touch the touchscreen accidentally and I change something. So I don't really care for it myself. A lot of people like it and that's okay. I, th I think it should be like an either or if you want it fine, if you, if you don't fine, but, um, but I'd like to see, um, so I'd like to test some Bluetooth, test some APRS. Honestly, I think that the from from the little bit of information they've given us, it looks a little bit lackluster from that. It doesn't look like there's been many updates between the three and four. There was a huge update between the FT1 and two and a huge update between the two and three. Between the three and five, I can't see a huge update or a huge difference yet. So I guess time will tell. This is just an announcement. It says it's going to be released this month. Okay. Great. So I'll uh, go order one now and we'll see what happens next. Put your comments below. Let me know if you know anything more than I do, more more than what we've shown here today. Let me know if you're planning on ordering one, what kind of features you are hoping for over the FT3D and catch you next time.